So, Project Headless MacBook was going really well until it wasn't. So I put it all together and I hooked it up and I turned it on. And within, say, the first, I don't know, five minutes, the fans went into super high mode. And I was like, yeah, nowhere for the air to go. So the slot where the laptop goes up in, there's nowhere for the heat to escape. So it just sets up in there and cooks. So we had to go into CAD and make some modifications. And that is, uh, it's so bad. This was prototype one, so I'm not super mad. But I am super mad that I used an entire, well, the entirety of my roll of matte carbon fiber PLA, or just carbon fiber PLA, to do this. And now it's not usable. Oh, that hurts. It pains me. It pains me. This is a big old chunk oh, to not use. So I've got to find a different filament since I'm out of this, but I want to print it in something else that will look this good. I don't know. Let's see what we've got. As you can see, we've made some modifications over here in the CAD program. We've added some slots. That way the hot air can escape out the back of the mount. So now I'm faced with reprinting it because this doesn't have slots. You know, old school me would break out the drill bit. Just drill out all those holes. But I'm like, new me is like, no, we need to create finished products with our 3D prints. Not, hey, here's this. You just got to drill it out to make it right. No, we've got to do it the correct way. So do I print in something other than carbon fiber or matte because I'm completely out of those colors or do I wait and order some more oh I don't know I don't know this is terrible but since prototype one is essentially trash then one thing it does let me do is test the adhesion of CA glue on 3d printed parts so I just want to see how much effort it would take to break this thing apart. Let's see. <laughs> okay. Wow. <clears throat> uh, all right. That that's that's pretty good. Yeah. Like you're. Oh my god. Yeah, I was thinking maybe I could just. <clears throat> Some, some shit's going to get broke. I promise you. Something's going to get broke. Alright. Maximum effort. Ugh, no, ain't happening. Ain't happening. Alright, well, that is good to know. So we know that if we do CA... Oh, that broke at the layer line which normally would not have that particular force push on it. So that's wild. Look how smoothly that broke at the layer line. All right, let's try this. Now that we got that. Oh my God. Oh, wow. Okay. So that took substantial effort and it actually ripped off some of the, yeah. So no, I would say for this purpose, you know, for this 3D printed, um, like headless MacBook, uh, riser that gluing it together is more than acceptable. Like it took a substantial amount. I broke my wrist years ago. And it still hurts to this day. But that actually uh, put the tweak on the old man risk. wrist. So, uh, no. I'm pretty happy with that. Now I just have to print it again. With some heat vents. So now I have to decide. I've got some... This is gray carbon fiber PLA. 
and even though the MacBook is gray, the monitor is black, <sighs> the buttons are all black. That's why I did it in black carbon fiber before, because I thought it looked good. Now, another option, obviously, um, Deeply recently sent over some Rapid PLA Plus, and it is black, but it will be shiny. Oh, I do have matte pink. <laughs> now nah, I'm good. <laughs> so it's either gray carbon fiber or black Rapid PLA Plus. So it will be shiny black or matte gray. Oh, I don't know. Mm, that's a tough decision. It'll probably be sitting in front of this monitor, and this monitor does have a gray strip. And, of course, the rest of the monitor is black for the most part. But this gray, I know you guys, you guys are probably like, this guy's crazy. You know, will that gray blend in well against the laptop itself? It definitely doesn't go well with the laptop itself. These are the type of things I'm tortured with. So you see that with silver, black buttons, and that would be a gray that doesn't match any of that. Or, doesn't really match that, but, it would work. You could see it could it could definitely work. It could work. Or do we go with like the deeply black? Now that black would blend really well with the buttons. Go well there. And then over here, obviously it would work. I don't know. I think we're gonna go with the deeply. And if it's shiny and I just can't deal with the shininess, which obviously it will be because it's just regular PLA. Maybe we'll do that. But I, I need to run this in my AMS because I do want to do the 0.4 nozzle. So we're going to have to move this over to a bamboo spool. So let's get that done. Now, out of, out of my own curiosity, because you're probably saying, that just looks like Elegoo. And I had the same question. Isn't this just Elegoo? Because it looks like it. Like, but this is an Elegoo spool. Let me make sure you guys can see it. Yeah, so that's an Elegoo spool. And this is the Deep Lee spool. So they definitely don't look the same. But we'll see. First thing we need to see is if we break this off of the cardboard spool, will it fit right onto the bamboo spool. So let's find out. And just to let you guys know, ahead of time, this filament was sent to me, but no obligation to do a review and no obligation to, you know, give you my opinion on how it prints. So that's exactly how we are going to address it. All right. So let's see if we can peel off. Oh, that's coming off nice and easy. Boom. Easy peasy. Let's get our uh, bamboo spool ready. Hopefully it fits. Pull off the inside ring here. Try to remove some of this cardboard if I can. If at all possible. The spool did not spring up on me, which is good. It's all wound very tight. Let's see if that drops. Oh, that's so beautiful. Is there a notch somewhere here? Is that a notch? Let's see if I can get the bamboo notch to drop in that notch. Not quite. It, there is a notch, but it's not quite big enough to drop the bamboo notch into it, I don't think.
Now normally I would not recommend you break out a Dremel and make a notch that accommodates for another spool, but I'm kind of in a situation here now where it doesn't have a spool, so I really didn't have a choice. Let's see, with a little Dremel finesse, we got it locked on. All right. So if you have an A1, no big deal. Just slap it up in the A1. And even if you have the AMS for the A1 or the A1 Mini, you won't have a problem. This is strictly a uh, X-Series or P-Series printer AMS problem. Uh, found a solution, obviously, but was it ideal? No. Could I have just forced it into that slot? I don't think so. That slot was very narrow. It was just wide enough to fit the filament in, you know, to kind of hold the filament in place. So I don't think even forcing it together would have been a possibility. It probably would have left the, you know, spool wonky on the one side. Where drilling it out obviously made it nice and solid. But now it's ready to load up into our AMS and we can get our project reprinting in this deeply rapid PLA+. Plus. The spool itself doesn't include any information other than printing temperature 200 to 230 C. That's it. So no bed temp information, nothing like that. So we're going to go, I'm just going to load it as uh, bamboo uh, PLA basic. And I'm going to try it at those temps, which is 220. And uh, we'll see how it goes. Well, apparently my brain's in PETG mode because I thought this was going to be super shiny. And it's actually not bad. It's not matte, but it's definitely not bad. So we've got to wait for that job to finish. And then we'll see if our MacBook's going to fit in there the way it did before. Maybe this is a solution. So we'll have those vents now and they're at an angle about 10% grade or 10 degree grade. So as the heat comes out of the back of the MacBook, it'll travel up and out of the back of the mount. So far so good. I think uh, that's gonna work out pretty good. So now I just have to wait. I guess while I'm waiting, little technicals tinkers right there. Go check him out if you haven't subscribed to him yet. And uh, yeah, I've got some orders to fill, so I'm going to go ahead and get those taken care of too while I'm at it. So I'll check back in with you in a little bit. All right, so the glue up on the laptop uh, stand is all done. And I've got to say, I'm very happy. Look at that. Look at that. Like a nice satin look to it. That is amazing. I'm so happy I chose to go with that deeply black over that gray i mean that just looks amazing so i've got my channels here for my cables and you know power video run out and hook into that channel i've got additional usb c's over here that i can plug into and we've created those venting channels in the back that way the heat from the laptop can escape out the back of that unit everything about that just turned out amazing now, this gives me the ability, this is an Intel Mac, so it won't be too long before they'll be phasing that out. But what it does allow me to do is down the road, if I can find an M1 or an M1 Max based laptop that is broken, has a broken screen, I can easily modify the geometry to accommodate that newer laptop, and that just makes for an amazing option down the road is it on right now i think it's on yeah yeah it's on right now um so i'm just kind of feeling for that heat coming out the back fans have not even kicked on it's probably been on 10 minutes fans haven't even kicked on so that in itself tells me that you know the airflow is there pretty excited about that can't wait to find a way to implement it because it actually looks pretty good overnight we printed an order uh this is for this is actually one of those items that we've been talking to that company about and I'm filling an order for that and that part looks great. Need to check the geometry, but after I got done printing this, I just went ahead and moved that spool over to this machine. So this is that same material. 
Um, this stays indoors, so it doesn't have to be PETG. So I just went ahead. That way I could fill this order and I didn't have to wait for that Sun Lou to come in. But I'm waiting for that one to come in because I am, I do have orders pending. So come on, USPS. Drop my stuff off. Let's go. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, that's it for the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Now, occasionally we get to do stuff like this, right? This is kind of more of an in-house project. I mean, obviously we were doing some, some prints for our customers, but at the same time we're working on an in-house project and just making something that was previously not useful, actually useful. And I think that's pretty cool. I appreciate you guys tuning in. If you have any questions or comments, hit me up down below and you know, I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And if you haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button and click the bell. That way you get notification when I post my next video. All right, guys. Later.